The first Cessna 172 was just a Cessna 170 that had its round tail replaced with a rectangular one and its tail wheel replaced with a nose wheel. This design would then go on to become the most produced airplane in history ever and it was improved upon 18 times before finally becoming the modern Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Four years after Cessna first introduced the 172, it made its first update to the design called the 172A. The straight tail had been changed to be a swept tail and the engine had been updated to a Continental O300C with the same 145 horsepower as the original design. The Cessna 172B quickly followed with a shorter landing gear, longer engine mount, a pointier propeller spinner, and an increase in gross weight from 2200 pounds to 2250 pounds. The C model got a key starter replacing the pole starter, new fiberglass wing tips, and new wheel fairings. The D model added one of the most significant changes to the model shape. The fuselage was cut down after the cabin to create a rear window that Cessna called the Omnivision. I don't think I've ever looked out this window while flying a 172. And the gross weight was increased again to 2300 pounds. The 172E replaced fuses with circuit breakers. The F model got rid of manually operated flaps in favor of electric operated ones. For the G update, Cessna again made the spinner pointier. The H model introduced a big change in the electronic system. The old generator was replaced with a 60 amp alternator and the flashing beacon was replaced with a rotating one. There were some cosmetic updates too, like a new nose gear strut and new wheel fairings. The Cessna 172i is the first light combing power Cessna 172. It replaces the six cylinder Continental engine with a four cylinder O320. Its power output was also increased to 150 horsepower from 145. The Cessna 172J didn't exist. It was rebranded as the 177 Cardinal after pushback from customers in the marketing department. The Cardinal has a strutless wing and a more steeply angled windshield. The 172K introduced optional 52 gallon long range tanks, new fiberglass wing tip design again, and a bigger rear Omnivision window. The 172L changed to a tubular landing gear from the flat spring gears and added a fairing between the dorsal fin and the vertical stabilizer. The 172M came with what Cessna calls the camber lift wing that had a drooping leading edge for better low speed performance and introduced the Skyhawk 2 trim with better avionics. The 172N brought major updates that saw the engine power increase to 160 horsepower from 150 using a new Lycomi engine that burns 100 low lead instead of 87 octane. It also includes a pre-select flap control replacing the old flap control that had to be held down for the flaps to move. The electrical system was also upgraded to 28 volts from 14 volts in 19. 1978. There was no O model because of the potential confusion with the number zero. The P model had optional tanks that expanded the long range fuel capacity from 52 gallons to 62 gallons. The landing light was moved from the nose to the wing. Gross weight increased to 2400 pounds from 2300 pounds. And this was the last model made before production stopped until 1997. The Q model was produced alongside the P and it was the same as the P but with a 180 horsepower engine and an increased gross weight of 2550 pounds. Production resumed 10 years later with a 172R model using the Lycoming IO360 D-rated to 160 horsepower. It's the first model to have a fuel injected engine and it's the engine 172s will continue to have to this day and its max gross weight was increased to 2450 pounds. The Cessna 172S Skyhawk SP is the model that is still in production today. It uses the same engine as the R model, but the maximum RPM was increased from 2400 to 2700, giving an extra 20 horsepower. The max gross weight was also increased to 2550 pounds. The 172 has come a long way since 1955, it has gotten gradually more powerful and more performance. To summarize the major changes, the first 172 only had 145 horsepower and 2200 pounds of useful load. The B model had 2250 pounds of useful load. The D model had 2300 pounds. The I model increased the horsepower to 150. The M model increased the horsepower to 160. The P model increased the gross weight to 2400 pounds. The Q model increased the horsepower to 180 and the gross weight to 2550 pounds. The R model went back down to 160 horsepower and 2450 pounds of useful load. And finally, the S model has 180 horsepower and 2550 pounds of useful load. I know that some of you will say that I missed the 172 XP and the 172 RG Cutlass, but those were actually certified under the 175 type certificate and not the 172s. And all this began because Cessna engineers realized that arranging the landing gears in a tricycle format made the airplane much easier to land, so they scrapped the plans for an updated 170 and instead introduced the now iconic 172 in its place. The prototype 172 was actually a Cessna 170B that was taken off the production line and modified with a tricycle landing gear. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks!